So, the next day, we get a buttfuck early. We eat breakfast. We get picked up by the tour group. And we head to Aswan. Sorry, I didn't want you missing out on how cool it was to see the jet lift off into the clouds when it was rainy. Because once you hit that cloud burst, gone. And the clouds just look so cool. So cool. And when we landed in Aswan, we met up with the tour group again. I can't remember the name of the manager, but he picked us up and we went down to go to the hotel. Now, the cool thing about this next hotel is that it was in the middle of an island, like right inside the Nile. So, what happened? Well, you had to take a ferry. You take a ferry all the way from one end of the Nile into the middle of the Nile to get to it.
Yeah, it was gorgeous. And the whole ride through it was amazing. I went on that ferry probably like nine, ten times the entire trip, and I loved every minute of it. We get to the hotel, and gorgeous hotel, like amazing. I'm taking pictures of all sorts of crazy things in the hotel already, and we just got there. So, you know, they're checking us in, they're checking all of our COVID tests, so on and so forth. Of course, I don't have COVID, I just got to Egypt, and I finally get to the room. And when I got to the room, I had looked out and seen that the Nile was right outside of my window. So I spent a good chunk of time, like, sitting outside while I was there. Because, I mean, being able to see the Nile was great. Um, it was beautiful at night, too. Um, all the lights of all the boats. And, yeah. I sat out there for a little while every night just to watch the Nile. And by now, I'm sure you're all wondering why I'm wearing this. I ended up getting this in Aswan. We'll get to that. So, on the first day, after we got to the hotel, um, I kind of crashed. I had... It took a lot out of me to get up that early. And so when we got to the hotel, I we had like an hour and a half wait. And I totally funked out. It was pretty funny. So Danica, she called me and I was like, out. But, you know, the phone woke me up. And I was like, shit, <laughs> right? I don't want to miss anything. So she kept calling me, but I was like, but when she was calling me, I was like scattering everything. And I was picking up everything, and I was trying to get everything into my backpack and make sure that I had everything. <laughs> when I finally got out, she was waiting for me across the uh, Nile, and I jumped on the ferry, and I went across the ferry, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I just totally... I died. And she was like, yeah, I kind of figured. So, and we meet up with uh, the Egyptologist. The Egyptologist's name is Mohammed. This guy... Um. He actually ended up adding me on Instagram long before we ended up going over to Egypt. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that until I got home and I went to go add him to Facebook and Instagram because I had his business card. But he was already on my Instagram and I was like, uh. First place we went to after I woke up was a dam. The cool thing about this dam, other than the fact that Good God, like the view down the Nile was incredible either side. Like, it was so cool. But they're actually, I believe, they're making another dam and they're going to try to fix the one that they previously have. So they're probably going to deconstruct that one and then make the other one work, if I was listening to it correctly. Um, the dam that's there right now, however, there's a monument next to the dam. And this monument, so my notes say, is a peace monument for Egypt and Russia. So there's this giant statue thing in Aswan, and it was called the Friendship Monument. Um, I can't remember the rest of the story, but it is, you know, Russia and Egypt to symbolize peace. That's pretty cool. The dam, of course, you know, a bunch of history to the dam. Nile likes to flood a lot. <laughs> Not really a whole lot of, you know, generalization of anything I was really interested in. But man, the dam was cool. And God, the views were amazing. Um... After the dam, we headed down to the incomplete obelisk. And this was super cool because the obelisk was huge. Oh my God, it was giant. You know, you see obelisks and you see like the things just tower over you. But looking at one completely unfinished, lying on the inside of a stone 
and seeing like how they actually like made the obelisks, nobody knows why it was unfinished. Um, some people think it was actually an obelisk that was during the time of like Nefertiti, if I remember correctly. Um, the thing was so big, and I could not believe it. Like, it was super cool. You know, seeing that thing was crazy. You know, um, I got as close as I could to it. I started, like, jumping down across rocks, and I was trying to find a way to, like, make it so I could get closer to it. And I can't even describe the sheer mass of the thing. And thinking how many people it would take to, like, hollow out where the obelisk was getting out of, and how many people it would take to, like, pull it up, and the weight of the thing, and oh my god, like, like, so many questions, so many questions, like, hundreds of people would have to, like, pull that thing up, yeah, it was big, really big, so, you know, again, not a lot to say about that, it was a giant obelisk, it was unfinished, um, but the big thing, the really big thing was the Philae Temple. This is great because when they say the Philae Temple, in my brain, it didn't come up as the Philae Temple. We get onto this boat and we're sitting on the boat and we're like going through things. cool, you know, we're going to another temple, that just means more freaking hieroglyphs, and, you know, right? So, schooling. Philly Temple was actually pulled out of the water. They deconstructed it, and then they put it on the top of an island. Now, the Philly Temple in America is not known as the Philly Temple. The Philly Temple is known in America as the Temple of Isis. This also has the Temple of Horus the Avenger in it. So you can imagine as I was going through, you know, the little boat ride, thinking, okay, cool, we're going to another temple. I'm never going to say no to this, right? I start looking around, and I'm looking at the island, and I see the temple, and I start looking at the sides of the temple, and I start looking at all the little hieroglyphs on the wall. And I'm like, where are we going again? Somebody says Philly Temple. Huh? What? <laughs> okay. Maybe it's not what I'm thinking it is. I mean, you know, a lot of things may look the same, right? We get to the front of the temple. And I look up at it. And I look at all the little, like patterns, and I look at all the different, like, things that are written on the walls, and I look at the board, and it says Isis Temple, and then it says Horus the Avenger, and I'm thinking, wait, this is the Temple of Isis, but in Egypt, it's not the Temple of Isis. A couple of months prior to going to Egypt, I posted something on my Facebook about how gorgeous it was, about how absolutely breathtaking seeing all the gods in one place on the walls were. Hey guys, I wanted to make a very valid point. 
probably around April, I shared something on my Facebook. And it was, my god, how beautiful is this thing? You know, ever since I heard I was coming here, I was obsessed with all the things I was going to see. And I'm here. So, I had like five, right? Six, maybe, that I shared, and I was like, holy crap. And I told you I'd probably die when I got to one of these temples. I'm trying to read it. Looking at the walls. Seeing all of them in one place. This is Horus the Avenger. It's the story of how Horus found his all the pieces of his father and put them all back together. And it's all over. Every one of the gods, everywhere. They're all over the pillars. Scrawled all over the walls. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. So I'm walking around on the inside of the temple. I'm um, looking at all the different little like temples and looking at all the different little places in it. I'm reading all the different things. Obviously, one of the biggest things were like, you know, the middle of the structure. I literally sat down in the middle of the structure for like, it like 10 minutes just looking at it. Beautiful. Reeked carnage in my head, but it was beautiful. Everything was covered in something. So I started going outside, trying to uh, see what else was around me. And it was also cool. And that was a hell of a way to end a day. We left the temple. And I believe that was the day that we ended up going and finding the glass blowers. Um, now these guys were awesome. And let me tell you why. Because they actually like showed us how they blow glass. This wasn't, like, mild in any which way, shape, or form. They had a freaking torch. They melted the glass. They blew into it with a straw. They molded it down. They did everything, and it was gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I was like, this is super cool, right? And then they took us upstairs. So upstairs is where they made oils. And um, the oils, they smelled really good. I'm not going to lie. I was on my phone for a little while. I was taking some notes that I had missed from uh, going into the Philly Temple. And uh, 
they were like talking about like, you know, what the scents were and how they made the different scents. And I was still paying attention, you know, but, you know, I was still like trying to like get past the notes that I missed out. Um, so eventually like, you know, they stopped explaining them to us and they said, is there anything you want to smell? I was not going to and tell, you know, Danica and John did. So obviously, you know, eventually Danica and John did. And I was like, all right, so let me try this one. They had Ankh, um, Ra, and something else. But the one that really won me over was Osiris. And Osiris, man, it smelled so good. I was, I was in heaven with this one. So we end up like buying something from them. It was like a whole thing of like six of these freaking things. And, uh, one was eucalyptus. It was for my mom and my Osiris and a bunch of things for my sister and John. And all of those freaking scents of all those oils were so cool. And, uh, it was funny, you know, buying them because I was like, hey, smell this, smell this. And I was, you know, Danica was like, smell this, smell this. And I was like, hmm, yeah, I like that. Right. <laughs> so it was rather amusing. Um, so afterwards, went out, we got some dinner. And of course, going to dinner out there was incredible. Can't remember where the first place we got dinner at was, but God, it was oh, so good. <laughs> 